Hello and welcome to lesson one on the Columbian Exchange, which is going to be the topic of our social studies analysis this semester. Um, the first lesson will have to do with animals and plants. Um, how did the exchange of animals and plants between the old world and the new world change the entire world? So our first left side question for today's notes is what was the Columbian Exchange? Uh, this is a fancy definition, but bear with me here. When we're talking about an exchange, we are talking about what happens when contact between any two peoples geographically separated from one another occurs. Um, an exchange of physical elements takes place. So uh, let's break that down into sixth grade English. Uh, any two people, so think of the people on one side of the ocean and think of the people on the other side of the ocean that up until Christopher Columbus did not know that each other existed. Uh, physical elements would be things like food, um, diseases, plants, animals, um, things that were once isolated on one side of the ocean all of a sudden were taken to the other side of the ocean and therefore caused changes on both sides of the ocean. And that's really the subject of this entire social studies analysis. How did the intermixing of two completely separate continents, you know, North and South America were basically one giant landmass, and Europe, Asia, and Africa were basically one giant landmass that did not have any contact with each other. What happened when that isolation was broken? Um, the three main elements we are going to focus on are going to be animals, plants, and diseases. Uh, and if you focus on those three elements in your paper, you're good. If you go above and beyond that and talk about things like religion, language, and other cultural elements, I will be extremely impressed. This would be the point to pause. Otherwise, we're going on to the next slide. All right. This map is extremely important, and this basically breaks down plants and animals that started off on one side of the ocean and went to the other side of the ocean. So if you go here on the left side, um, plants that came from North America were beans, chocolate, corn, peanuts, pineapples, potatoes, pumpkins, squash, sweet potatoes, tobacco, tomatoes, and the animals we have here is turkeys. So all of those things listed here started off in North and South America and people from Europe, Africa, and Asia had never seen them before. Um, and so they were not part of their diet uh, at all. Whereas things that came from Europe and had never been seen in North or South America were bananas, and that usually surprises people, Cattle, there were no cows in North and South America. Chickens. Citrus fruits, which is surprising to some people because most people associate citrus with Florida and the Caribbean. Coffee, which also surprises many people. Grapes. Horses made a huge difference um, for the Spanish conquistadors. Onions, peaches, pigs. Uh, and again, when pigs were released in North and South America, they basically ran wild and even formed an entirely new species called the boar. Uh, rice um, came from Asia. Sugarcane, which is also a surprise because the Caribbean is known for sugarcane, and wheat. So these basically can be the basis of two long lists for you in your graphic organizer. And again, this would be a good place to pause the video because uh, I'm moving on to the next slide. So our first left side question is going to be what animals were exchanged? And in this case, we're only going to focus on the most important animals. There were lots of different animals exchanged, but we're focused on kind of the, the big picture animals that had a, a big high impact on the different continents. First thing you need to know is the llama also known as the alpaca, was the only domesticated animal in Latin America or the Americas in general. 
Um, so that was the only animal that could carry the weight of a human possibly on its back. And even, even that was a stretch. There were no horses, there were no cows, there were no oxen, nothing like that. So if you consider farming and the impact that cattle have on farms, that literally did not exist in the Americas before the time of Christopher Columbus. Horses, pigs, and sheep changed North and South America. Not only f cattle um, had the ability to produce food and do labor, horses obviously uh, had the ability to provide fast transportation uh, and they could carry a lot of weight on their back, they could pull carts. Pigs were valuable for their uh, food value and sheep were valuable both as food and the wool could be used for clothing. So, so these are four animals that are extremely important to farming and are very useful for uh, human life and human civilization. Without them, the natives of North and South America led much simpler lives. These animals changed completely how the land in North and South America was used. So, and all of these have to do with exchanges that went from Europe to the Americas, which is why we have the arrow. I'm moving on to the next slide. Our next slide has to do with how these animals changed the environment. Um, they had a very large environmental impact um, and even their waste, the fertilizer they created, uh, let's not dwell too long on that, became an important part of the agricultural system because it was able to, in essence, recharge the soil and make the soil so that it was constantly uh, available to grow food. So there was a cycle uh, introduced into the natural system where the fertilizer was you know, um, placed on the farmland and that allowed the farmland to grow and then the sheep and the cattle would eat what was grown on the farmland and the cycle would just continue. And on to the next slide. So now we're going to focus on plants that were exchanged, and this was also extremely important. Um, Europeans brought what we call cash crops to the Americas, and they brought new crops back from the Americas. Uh, when we talk about cash crops, we talk about things that can be grown on large plots of land and sold. Um, for a lot of money and things that were very much needed in Europe because Europe did not have nearly as much good farmland as the Americas did. So maize, also known as corn, potatoes, tomatoes, tobacco, beans, chocolate, and cotton all went to Europe from North and South America and revolutionized the diet in Europe. But from Europe to the Americas came sugar, rice, wheat, coffee, bananas, and grapes, and those things revolutionized life in the Americas. So instead of being isolated on one side of the ocean or the other, all of these things were now found on both sides of the ocean, and that changed the entire world. That, my friends, is a big deal. Moving on to the next slide. So now we're talking about the impact or the consequences that these new plants had on the Americas. First of all, the farmland in America was amazing. So these new crops thrived in the Americas much more so than they did where they came from in Europe. America was basically the perfect place to grow these crops. Uh, many indigenous plants that were in the Americas got crowded out by the new crops and weeds that came over from Europe. Um, we use the phrase invasive species. An invasive species is a species that is stronger um, than the species that are in a given area and that tends to crowd out the old plants. So here in Salem, for example, we have English ivy, which is an invasive species and tends to take over and crawl up the trees. 
Uh, the plants from Europe were stronger than the crops in the Americas. And so when it came to competition between plants that were native to the Americas and plants that came over from Europe, in most cases, the plants that came over from Europe won out and dominated the plants that were native to the Americas. So as Europeans moved over to the Americas and began to colonize the Americas, the economy shifted to large-scale agricultural production. Most of the land was used for farming. Most of the crops that could be preserved and sent across the ocean were um, sent across the ocean, and the people who grew the crops in the Americas became very, very rich. They also needed lots of labor to um, produce those crops, which is where the whole slavery issue in the Americas came along. And you'll learn about that in a lot more detail in eighth grade U.S. history. And of course, the crops that came from the Americas were very, very popular in Europe, especially corn. Corn was very, very revolutionary. And of course, the tomato was pretty important as well, because how could the Italians have pizza if it weren't for the tomato? So this is a brief summary of the animals and plants that were exchanged between Europe and the Americas. Uh, in the conclusion of the lesson, we're going to focus on diseases. Um, and that is a little bit more disturbing and not as positive uh, as these topics. And we will save that for the next lesson. So this would be a good time to either fill out your summaries at the bottom of your Cornell notes or uh, take these notes that you've taken in Cornell format and find out where on your graphic organizer would be the best place for these notes to go. Please do that now. This concludes lesson number one on the Columbian Exchange.